I'm Dr. Williams, and this is my podcast. I have two graduate degrees in psychology, am a licensed mental health counselor, and an expert in the area of spirituality. I am devoted to living my best life and am sharing it with all of you. I'm bringing my expertise, education, and life experiences to you through this podcast. Everyone deserves to enjoy life, and that is what I'm here to talk about. Depression, anxiety, grief, you name it, we all go through it at one time or another. I believe there's a better way to come at these things than mainstream mental health care offers, and I'm here to offer you my perspective and dig into discovering how you can feel good no matter what life throws at you. It is my intention to contribute goodness to this world, and the content herein is how I do that. But one disclaimer before we dive in. Should you decide to apply the information offered here, be prepared for improvements in your life. You may even live happily ever after, and you'll only have yourself to thank. This is Feel Good Now, the Dr. Williams Podcast. Today's episode is what I am referring to as Ground Zero. So this is the introduction to the podcast, and this is actually probably my 17th or 18th recording since I bought um, all my equipment back in March. It's mid-June now. So I've actually been recording for some time, and I had been listening to How to Start Podcast podcasts, and they mentioned that it's a good idea to kind of do some recordings and then go back and do your intro when you're ready to start publishing and putting your podcast out there. Now that I'm actually sitting down and doing the introduction for you guys, I realize that everything I've recorded up to this point, I think was just practice. It just kind of got me in the zone and got me used to talking and formulating my thoughts and kind of putting them into words so that I could record them for all of you. So to be honest with you, I don't even know if I'm going to use any of the recordings I have up to this point. I might just start fresh from this point on and go forward. And the reason for that is because the focus of this podcast has changed tremendously since I sat down and did my first recording. And I think that probably happens sometimes. And I'm not saying that this podcast will stay focused in the way that I'm focusing it right now forever. Maybe things will switch up and it'll change and morph into something else or go down a different path. And I'm going to let that happen and totally step outside of my type A personality, which likes to stay focused in one area. But this journey, the reason for this podcast will not allow for any of that. And I am embracing that 100%. I just recently chose the name for this podcast. Feel Good Now with Dr. Williams is all about exactly what that says. It's about feeling good right now. That is the most important thing in life, period. So to give you a little bit of background, just my bio. I have been studying and practicing psychology for 20 years at this point. So it has been a long time of focusing in that field. And uh, when I did start practicing, when I was getting my master's degree, I worked with children for three years, and then I moved agencies and worked with adults and veterans specifically for two years. So that was with my master's degree. Now, while I was doing this, when I was working with the adults and veterans, I, I got really sick. And I broke out in hives. It was an ongoing problem. I was in and out of several doctors' offices trying to figure out what was going on with my body. And no one had any answers for me. So I think intuitively, I knew it had something to do with my job. Community mental health, I mean, it is hard. It is hard. The caseloads are 
extremely high. I remember my caseload being upwards of 80 people. And that's seen one patient every other week. So when you have 80 of those, you know, that's 40 people in a week's time. And you're working 40 hours, right? As a full-time employee. So if you put the math together, I was exhausted. And this isn't easy stuff, right? I mean, we're sitting down with people that have big problems and they want to talk about their problems because that's what's on their mind. I realize now that was probably a big problem for me and the reason that I was breaking out in hives. So originally I would have said that it probably had to do with my caseload. I would say the amount of work was probably more than I was able to handle. My own mental health was taking a hit and it was showing in a really big physical way. And that's how I became aware that, you know, something had to change. But now I realize that that's probably not the entire story. And the content of the work itself probably played a big part as well. The reason I am saying that now is because I am kind of understanding more about the mental health field with my spiritual standpoint than I ever have before. When I was practicing, You know, we have to do um, continuing education credits and constantly going to seminars and learning new modalities to try to help our patients. And I never really felt like I found one that fit me personally. I think I practiced cognitive behavioral therapy the most, and that was probably a little bit because of pressure from the agency, because all of us therapists were pushed to use evidence-based modalities, meaning they're backed up with science. And cognitive behavioral therapy was at the forefront of that kind of research at the time that I was practicing. And I'm not trying to talk badly about mental health at all. I just feel like my understanding has grown quite a bit to the point where I can see how it's flawed. So I'm going to make a bold statement here. As things are now with mental health treatment, I do not believe that that is the best way to help people get what they want. When people come to therapy, 100% of those people seeking mental health care are doing so because they want to feel better. And that might be in a certain area of their life or their life in general. But 100% of people want to feel better. So as a therapist, that's the position you're in, right? To sit down with somebody, work out the problems, and figure out a way to help that person improve their life so they can feel better. So that is the number one problem with mental health treatment. And I know that's a big statement and probably hard to understand, especially if you're in the field or even if you have a therapist. But here's the thing. It's conditional. All of that is conditional. We are talking about conditions. That's what the problems are. Uh, Relationship issues, um, career issues, you name it. I mean, any kind of problem that a person can bring into a therapist's office is a condition of their life. Then the therapist tries to figure out a way to help the person change the condition so they can feel better. But that's actually backwards. And probably the reason why a lot of people end up staying in therapy for years and years and years because they aren't making headway in their life in the way that they could be if they were just to tweak things a little bit. So here are the flaws that I I see in most mental health therapeutic modalities. 
The first one is they focus way too much on what the patient does not want. So that is when you sit down and you're talking about the problems in your life, all of the things that are going wrong, essentially all of the conditions that you don't like and you don't want. You want an improvement in that area. So that's actually the good news. When you know what you don't want, then you know what you do want. Now, as a therapist, if I were to sit down as a therapist now, I'm not practicing currently, but if I were to, then that right there would be where I would take it. So as soon as somebody told me, well, my spouse and I haven't been getting along very well, I would stop them right there and I would say, okay, so now we know what you don't want. So now we need to shift things into discussing what it is you do want. And then I would pursue a line of thinking that promotes my patient to creatively speak the kind of relationship that they would like to have with their spouse. Now, maybe you're getting a feeling for what what that's doing as I'm saying that to you right now. What we would be doing is changing that vibration for the patient. Whereas before, when they started talking about the problems in the relationship, here they are going down a negative track. Now, we don't want to gather any more momentum going down that way because that will grow. Okay. And I don't want to get into that too much yet, but we will definitely get into that more. But What I would want to do is establish a positive vibration for the patient. Let's talk about the things you do want. That is number one. So that's the flaw that I see in most modalities in mental health treatment right now. Way too much time talking about what the patient does not want. That's not helpful. The second flaw, there are certain things in life that are just the way they are. And this is one of them. Mental health modalities do not have a foundational footing in the universal law of attraction. And maybe that conjured up some ideas for you of manifesting, or maybe you're familiar with the book, The Secret, that was really popular several years ago. Yes, to all of that. Yes, that's all true. There is a universal law of attraction, and we all are living that all the time in every moment. Our lives represent that to a T. There is no exception. So if a mental health modality did have a foundational footing in the universal law of attraction, Therapists would be focused on what the patient wants and then help guide them in a positive direction so that they could start manifesting that which they want into their life. The third flaw in mental health treatment modalities currently is that they don't come at everything from a vibrational standpoint. That goes along with universal law. We are vibrational beings, and we live in a vibrational universe. That is just the way it is. When you understand that, then you can start to manipulate it in your favor. I do want to say at this point, I am not saying right now that there are not mental health practitioners out there helping people. They're most definitely are. And I'm also not saying that there aren't mental health professionals out there who are doing exactly what I am implying. 100% there are. Many of them may not even realize they're doing it. They may be doing it instinctually because they are a representation of source energy. And source energy, that is your inner being. We all are source energy. That's God, it's the universe, it's whatever name you like to label it with, but it's the stuff we're all made out of. And so that comes forward even when people are not consciously aware 
of what is happening. So I know that's happening. I know there are a lot of people who find therapy useful and helpful and beneficial and has turned their lives around in the best of ways. So don't get me wrong. I am not here bad-mouthing mental health treatment. I am just speaking my truth. And I can take all of the information, all of the research that I have done in psychology, and it's a lot, a lot, just to get my doctorate. I have spent countless hours researching in psychology. But once I found these truths, it all just became clear to me that this is really the basis for all of life. And the way that we have been approaching mental health treatment could greatly be improved with a foundation in this knowledge. Real quick, before I get back to this topic, I want to know if you have a product or service that aligns with the content here on the Dr. Williams podcast. If so, this space could be your advertisement. Reach out to me by going to drwilliamspodcast.com. Okay, back to the episode. The fact is, 100% of people would improve their lives if they practiced feeling good right now, in the moment. That means exactly what it implies. Every single moment is an opportunity to feel good or a lack of feeling good. Now, there's a range of emotions in there, right? You know, obviously, we aren't just only feeling good or only feeling bad. There's a lot of things in between that lean one way or the other. It's a continuum. But that's the simplest way I can put it. The most important thing in in any moment, this moment right now for you, right now, is to feel good. Find it. Find it in whatever way you can, in whatever way necessary. Originally, I was motivated to do this podcast with the intent of helping people. I think that's kind of just at my core. You know, that's why I went into the field of psychology to be a therapist. I really wanted to help people. And from what I understand, discussing with my my patients in the past, they always felt that I did help in some way. And I always established a very good rapport with my patients. And that was the most important thing. And they teach you that when you're in doing continued education and things like that. They teach you that in the therapeutic relationship, the relationship you establish, the rapport you have with the patient is the most important thing in the therapy process. So I was good at that, according to my patients. But I realize now that I am the same as everybody. We are all extensions of source energy, and we all have the same power to create the life that we want. The best way I can do that is not by guiding others to do it, though I may use my own life as a testament of it for those to witness. And if that's beneficial to people, then very cool. Like, I love that. I hope that more people can use their own lives to inspire others. That's tremendous. But really, my intention is just to share my own journey with you. I want more than anything to connect with other people who are also celebrating life. That's why we're here. Every single one of us designed this life and chose to be here, wanted it more than anything. We wanted this moment right here. We wanted it. We are connecting right now. You are listening. I am talking to you. I feel it in my body right now. Like I feel my own alignment speaking this truth. This moment right here, this is ours. Here we are. We are connecting. And it feels so good. And that's why I'm doing this. I want to celebrate. I don't want to talk about negative things that are going on in people's lives and try and get them to turn that around. I want to talk about all the great things. 
because that, that is what creates our reality. All of us, collectively, feeling good now in our moment is creating our own individual reality. When we all do that together, just think about it. Think about it. That is what changes the world. That is what gets us to where we really want to be in perfect harmony on earth with each other. Looking back, I can see exactly how my inner being led me here to this point, to this knowledge. And it's pretty cool to witness. Because like I said, I have spent so much time in the field of psychology. And yet, this was the path I was really on. And now I know that. And now I can see all of those little stepping stones along the way in my spiritual journey. My purpose in life was not to focus on science like I thought it was. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with science. Science has its purpose and usefulness. It also comes with its limitations, especially when people are focused on it too much and not listening to their own inner guidance, because that is where the sweet spot is. That's all that really matters right there. Okay, so let's talk about why it's important to feel good now. There is this thing called the vortex. We each have one. You kind of get an idea, like a visual in your mind of something swirling around like a vortex. Well, that's full of all of your desires. Everything that you want to experience in life, whether this one or a future one or 20 lifetimes down the way. Life is eternal, so this is not the only life you get here on earth. But the point is, this is going to continue. It is the eternal journey. So the vortex is full of all those things that you desire to experience. And the way that those desires get there a lot of times is through contrast. And contrast is something that I'm going to refer to a lot in this podcast, because contrast means the opposite of what you want. So let's say uh, you're going about your business, you're trying to get out the door to go to work or get the kids to school, whatever it might be, and you're rushing a little bit and you're a little behind schedule and, you know, the kids aren't a cooperating or you had to run back in the house for three different things that you forgot and you just don't feel like you're really in the zone. Everything is not just coming easily. Everything's fighting you, it feels like. Then you go to get into your car and you bump your head and that was like the last straw and now you're yelling and angry and spilling your coffee or whatever. It's just a a series of contrasting things because what you really wanted was the ease. You wanted everything to go smoothly. And so in those moments of contrast, you're actually sending off rockets of desire because when you know what you don't want, then you know what you do want. Okay. And that's why contrast is not a bad thing. Contrast is wonderful. Contrast is communication with you, with your consciousness. Because when you're experiencing it, that's when you know this is not what I want. And you can bring yourself back around to feel good in the moment by pulling from something that you know works for you and get yourself back in alignment. When you are in alignment, feeling good, in alignment with your source energy, your inner being. That is when you're in the vortex, in that swirly place where all of your wonderful desires are. And when you continue to feel good in every moment, 
and you start thinking good things and you're saying the things that you want, whether it is or is not that way, you have to always speak what you want and think those thoughts. Now, those things are turning into reality. And that is how you get everything you want in life. And when you are able to do this regularly, on purpose, that is when you are a deliberate creator. Being a deliberate creator means that now you're in the driver's seat. You know what to do in order to manifest whatever you want in life. The key to it, feeling good right now. And this is probably going to take some practice. This is a lifestyle change. If you're just going along, not thinking about things on purpose, not being careful what you say, and definitely not purposely feeling good, things are just happening. And some things are good. You're creating some good things for those times that you are feeling good. You're pulling from that vortex. And then on the times you're feeling bad, that's when you start experiencing more bad. Because whatever you focus on, your focus is important. Whatever you focus on, that is what you get. So you know that cliche that shrinks say, yes, and how does that make you feel? Well, here I am, a shrink, and that's my question to you. In every moment, well, how are you feeling? That's, that's what you need to be asking yourself. How am I feeling right now? And if it's anything less than good, pop back over to good. Okay, so let me just interject here. Because I am a psychologist and I feel like maybe some of my audience will come to this podcast in that way through following a mental health path, I am not trying to downplay depression, anxiety, grief. I understand. I really, really do. When I say just pop back over to good feelings, I am not trying to downplay the very real negative emotions that are in your life. Those are, they are real and they are extreme. But what I am saying is you have the power to turn that around and only you have that power. You got to find what it is. Once you start practicing feeling good and you get some of these things that work for you, then you will be able to just pop back over to that good feeling because you're going to know what works for you. You got to do the foundational work first. It only takes 17 seconds of thought to start gaining some momentum. If you are thinking about things that you don't want, you're going to continue down those negative emotion paths. You have to purposely think about positive things in your life. Focus on the good things. Whatever works for you. The most important thing to do is to follow your bliss. And even if you are downright depressed and you can raise your emotion up to feeling guilty, let's say, that is still a step in the right direction. You just keep taking those steps till you work your way all the way up to feeling happy. Okay? Practice. Just practice. Just don't give up. You got to keep trying. And then one day you're going to realize, hmm, I'm experiencing some contrast right now. I'm going to pop over to happy. And I remember that one day when this happened and I felt so good. Take yourself back there and then focus on it for 17 seconds. And then turn that into another 17 seconds and then find more things to appreciate and more things that you love that make you happy. They are there. They are there. You are a creator. I am a creator. I am creating my reality. I am working on consciously being in alignment 
so that I can be a deliberate creator. That is the purpose of this podcast. Because I achieve my alignment with my source energy, with my inner being, by feeling good. In every single moment that I can achieve feeling good, I am in alignment. I am in my vortex. I am manifesting all of my desires. I am really stoked about sharing my journey with you guys. I want us to celebrate together. Please reach out to me. Introduce yourself. I want to know you. I am interested in your journey. And I am excited to be co-creating with you. That concludes this episode, but if you don't want to wait for the next episode to come out, I have more for you at drwilliamspodcast.com. You can learn more about me and my journey to podcasting, find all the ways to connect with me on social media, and there's a button to subscribe so you're the first to know what's new and upcoming. You also can shoot me an email at hello at drwilliamspodcast.com. You are so special to me, and your support does not go unnoticed. I want to support you too. This podcast is my outlet for growth, because when you teach something, you hold yourself accountable and apply the information in life. But the inspiration for these episodes comes in a variety of ways, and one of those is through you. I want you to feel like this is your show too. So send me a message and let me know which episode is your favorite and why, and tell me if there's a topic you'd want to hear me talk about. Your feedback applies to so many people, and your suggestion could change someone's life for the better. The best way to do this is by subscribing to the show and leaving a review through your favorite podcast platform. I really listen to you guys, and this dialogue feeds my soul. You say that you're a fan of me, but truth be told, I am a fan of yours. Everything is working out for each of us, and we're all in this together.